Hey everyone, here's chapter 20 of Out of My Mind. I was right about the weather today. I hope the little crocus buds have tiny wool blankets because the temperature dipped back down to the 30s and our classroom was chilly when we rolled in this morning. The public address system blared the usual Monday morning announcements about bake sales and soccer practice. Most of the time, nobody in H5, not even Mrs. Shannon, pays it much attention to them. The craziness of our morning usually takes over. Mrs. Shannon had managed to get us a Wii game system. I don't know how. Willie loves the baseball program. I have, I have learned to keep out of his way while he pretends to hit the ball as he watches the screen. Sometimes he swings, go wide, a hit. He'll cry out with triumph, then he'll try to run the bases in the classroom. Even Freddie can't keep up with him. I usually sit in a corner with my headphones on, trying to tune it all out. But today I listened carefully to the bulletin. My heartbeat sped up and I jerked my arms with excitement as I heard the principal say, all students who wish to try out for the Wiz Kids quiz team, please report to Mr. Dimming's room after school. I stayed nervous all day. I didn't tell Rose what I planned to do. I thought about it, then decided not to. Suppose she said it was a stupid idea. I didn't think I could take that. Then I spilled tomato soup all over the front of my blouse at lunchtime. Even though Catherine tried to clean it up, you can't get red stuff out of a white shirt. I felt like a slob. I wish I had thought of this the, thought of that this morning. I could have told mom to pack a change of clothes for me. It's still hard to remember that I can say stuff like that now. I didn't go out for inclusion classes all day. I wanted to stay until the study until the last minute. But as, as soon as the last bell rang, I grabbed Catherine's arm, hurry, I typed to Mr. D's room. Even though I'm in the electric wheelchair, we set it to manual so she could push me. I'm too nervous to drive. We arrive at Mr. Dimming's room. A group of kids from my history class are already there, whispering together and going over note cards. They look up in surprise when Catherine wheels me in. Hi, Melody, Rose says. What are you doing here? Her voice doesn't sound as friendly as usual. Quiz team, I type. She can't be on the team, I heard Claire whisper to Jessica, wrinkling up her nose. She's from the retard room. Molly thinks that's really funny. She screeches like a blue jay when she laughs. I decided to ignore them even though I feel my anger arising. I have to stay focused. Several more students file into the room from both grades five and six. I don't know the sixth graders very well. They have different recess times. I wonder if they're smarter. They've had more time to learn stuff. A few kids point at me and whisper. When Mr. Dimming hurries in, a, hurries in carrying a stack of papers, sealed in plastic, he scans the room to see who's here. He frowns slightly when he sees me, but he sets the papers on his desk and greets us all. Welcome, he says. I'm so glad that so many of you have chosen to try out for the competition this afternoon. It's going to be challenging as well as fun. Are there any questions before we get started? Connor, of course, raises his hand. Yes, Connor, Mr. Dimming says with a good-natured sigh. Uh, will we get pizza and stuff during practice like last year? Don't you think you need to make the team first? His friend Rodney, Rodney yells out. Rodney is right. Let's do one thing at a time. Mr. Dimming lifts the stack of test papers from the desk and holds them like a treasure. I hold in my hand the official test questions from the National Wiz Kids headquarters in Washington, D.C. I will be reading the questions to you, just as it's done in row competitions. And then he stops and stares. Everyone looks around to see what, his, who, what has interrupted him. It's me. Mr. Dimming taps the stack of papers for a moment, clears his throat, and addresses Catherine. You know, I don't think it's appropriate for Melody to be here. This is not a recreational activity just for fun. The purpose of this meeting is to choose our official team. He isn't even speaking to me. He's looking right over my head at Catherine, as if I were invisible. Now I am really mad. I turn up the volume on my machine, very loud. I am here to take the test. Mr. Dimming blinks. Melody, I don't want your feelings to get injured. The test is very hard. I am very smart. I just don't want you to be hurt, Melody. He sounds sincere, sort of. I'm tough, I type. You go, girl. Rose suddenly says from the front of the room. A few other kids clap their, su clap their support. That makes me feel a little better, just a little. Catherine speaks up. By law, she cannot be excluded. You know that, sir. Yes, but... Read the questions to the students just as you, as you had planned. They'll write their answers on notebook paper. Melody will record her answers, then print them out for you. How do we know you won't be helping her? Claire asks. Because I won't be in the room, Catherine replied. 
Too bad because you might need some help. Catherine grins at her, but Claire just looks away. I tell Catherine, go now. I almost push her away. Thank you. Your mom is going to pick you up? Yes. Good luck, Melody. You're my champ, no matter what. You got that? Got it. I wave as she leaves the room. Mr. Dimming shrugs his shoulders and continues with the directions. There are 100 quiz questions. I will read each prompt one time and each answer only once. You will have 30 seconds to record each response. Please write only the capital letter A, B, C, D, and sometimes E. Are there any questions? Claire's hand shoots up. Yes. How do we know Melody doesn't have answers stored in her machine? Us normal people aren't allowed to use computers. Why are you so worried about Melody? Rose answers before Mr. D has a chance to. Are you scared she'll get a higher score than you? No way. Then be quiet so we can get started. Mr. D smiles at Rose. Students get out two sheets of paper, one to write on, one to cover your answers. We believe in honesty, but an extra sheet of paper can't hurt. Everyone shuffles to find paper and pens. Then a feeling of quiet, expecta quiet expectation falls over the room. Mr. Deming unseals the official test and opens to the first page. Let us begin, he says, his voice suddenly sounding very official. Number one, the capital of Colombia is A, Brussels, B, Santiago, C, Bogota, D, Jakarta. He pauses while everyone scribbles their answers. I'm punching the letter C. Go to old Mrs. V and her capital quiz cards. Number two, Mr. Dimmy continues. Gerontology is the science study of A, the elderly, B, gerons, C, germs, D, rocks and jewels. I punched in the letter A. So far, so good. The test continues for the next 30 minutes or so. He asks questions about atoms and clouds, about fish and mammals, about famous religion, religions and dead presidents. Some of the questions I'm sure of. I guess on a couple. The qu math questions make me sweat. This is the hardest, most exciting thing I've ever done. The very last question is a killer. And number 100, Mr. D says, relief in his voice. The small intestine of an average adult, if stretched out vertically, would measure how long? A, 8 to 12 inches, B, 1 to 2 feet, C, 5 to 7 feet, D, 20 to 23 feet. I punch in the letter D, hoping I've guessed right, and breathe a sigh of relief. It was over. Pencils down, please, Mr. Dimming tells us. Make sure your name is on the paper, then cover it with the cover sheet and pass it up to me. As everyone gathers papers and scribbles their names hurriedly, I push the print button on my Betty Talker. A slim sheet with my answers emerges from the side. Mr. Dimming walks back to where I sip and rips it off. He doesn't look at me. We're done here, he tells the class. Your parents were told what time to pick you up, but if anyone has a problem with a ride, let me know. I won't leave the building until everyone has safely left school grounds. I'm the last one out. I know my mom will probably come in to get me, but I want to leave on my power. I turn my chair and wheel around to face the door. Melody, Mr. E.D. calls out. I spin back around. I hope you were not discouraged by all of this. I was only trying to protect you from being hurt. I'm okay, I tell him. I'll be announcing the scores and the members of the team tomorrow. I just don't want you to be disappointed. I understand. Then I ask him, top eight scores get picked? Yes, four team members and four alternates. I am tired and I've started to drool a little. I'm sure he thinks I'm a dunce, a sloppy one at that. I feel like the red stain on my blast is screaming. Okay, good night. Good night, Melody. See you tomorrow. And uh, you might want to wipe your mouth. I rub the sleeve of my shirt across my lips. The tomato sing shirt. I can't imagine what he was thinking. I almost bump into mom as she hurries in. How did you do, sweetie? She asks, bre asks breathlessly. Okay, I guess. To Mr. D, she says, thank you for giving her the opportunity to participate. My pleasure, Mrs. Brooke. M Brooks, Melody is a delight, and I'm amazed she's been able to achieve as well as she does. Yeah, right. A delight with drippy lips and a dirty shirt. Let's go, mom, I type. I need to go to the bathroom and I want to go home.